single person on the planet is in that exact same boat. Every single one of us have fallen short. We've all missed the mark. Amen. And so let me tell you how maybe I told you how Satan would spin it. Here's how God would spin it. He would say something like this. Son, daughter, my grace is sufficient for you. And I'm going to be here to help you when you're tempted in the future. And God would say to you, listen, I want you to take all that pain and all that hurt from all those consequences. And I'll tell you, I want you to deepen your relationship with me. I'm here to comfort you, to heal you, to set you free. Come on. Whose report are we believing today? I say it's time we believe the report of the Lord. Come on. Let me tell you something. The Lord is saying this morning, He's got good plans for you. They're not plans to harm you. They're plans to prosper you. They're plans to bless you. They're plans that are for your good, for your good well-being. So why don't we let God interpret our lives and tell the media and tell the world and tell those with a critical report, listen, I believe what Jesus is saying to me. Oh man, I feel like preaching this morning. Amen. I want to give you a biblical example today of a man who reinterpreted his life, the facts of his life. And that's the question that we have. Now that we understand that there's the facts and the interpretation of the facts, we've got to ask ourselves, how, how do I allow God to reinterpret my life? Well, I want to use an old expression today. Uh, my grandma used this, both grandmas, by the way, use this expression. It's called praying through. How many have ever heard that? I got to pray through. Uh, when, in other words, when something happened of a negative or a trying nature, those old saints of God would say something like this. Well, I, I first, I've got to pray through about it. Whenever there was a disappointment, how many of you know that word disappointment covers a lot of stuff? I wonder today, is there anybody who would say, I've been disappointed with life? You know, you don't have to be old to be disappointed with. You can be 12 years old or 15 or 18 and you can feel disappointed in life. But as a believer, you've got to understand that you've got to pray about things. And what they would say, is, if you would, something would be brought up, you would hear people talk like this. They would say, you know, I really can't comment on that situation because I haven't prayed through yet. How many have ever heard anybody say that? I can't comment because I, what they were saying is, listen, I'm not going to react to that until I hear God's interpretation. And they, they, they would realize that, that they didn't want to give the devil even a little inch of ground. And they would say something like, I can't talk about that. I don't want to say anything angry or anything bitter. I've got to go to God and I've got to pray through about that. I'm going to tell you something. We need to reinstitute that in the house of the Lord. Come on. Whenever Whenever something negative happens, whenever you're going through a difficult moment, it's time for us to turn to the living God. It's time for us to hear Him speaking to us, and He will allow us to be able to pray through. And as we pray through, let me tell you something, God will come on the scene. He'll reinterpret the events of our life, and we can then walk through in victory. Is there anybody that has the faith to say, I believe that that's my God? Amen. So you, how do you pray through the disappointments of life? And we're going to hit these rather rapidly today. So as we say, hold on to your hats. I remember sometimes people used to wear hats to church. Number one, you've got to acknowledge your disappointments in life. Now I want to talk about this man here in Psalms 116. I think he had, a, he had actually lost someone who was very close to him. And he describes the disappointment in words that are very painful to him. You can almost feel the depth of the emotion that he has. He, he describes his disappointment like this as he's thinking about that one that he's lost. He says, the cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble 
and sorrow. In other words, you can almost see that, read almost into, uh, into that, 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 that he was grieving, that, that death seemed to be kind of just strangling him, wrapping itself around him. Now, we don't know everything about this scenario. We, we can't understand it. It's not actually very clear in the Scripture. But here's what I'm saying. I'm saying there might be some of us today who you would look at your life and you say, you know something, Pastor Bob, I'm feeling really different disappointed with the things that have happened to me. And let me tell you, it's okay to acknowledge those things before the Lord. Am I right? It's okay to go to God in prayer and say, God, do you see the situation that I'm in? Do you see what others have done? Do you see the predicament that I find myself in? Oh, come on. How many of you know that God's interested in the big things? He's interested in the small things. There's nothing that's too big or small that we can't take it before the Lord. So the first step, my friend, is to determine to acknowledge those things before the Lord. And then secondly, you've got to determine that you're going to move past the barriers. You know, some people get stuck in life. Sometimes disappointments come into people's life and, and it's just like they can't ever move forward. And you see, for this man, I believe the greater problem was not just that he had ex what he had experienced, but it was that he couldn't move forward. He had a hard time. He was like he was stuck in a season. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Let me read the scripture for you today. Psalms 116 and verse 8 says this. Now understand, he's saying this looking back, but as you hear his testimony, you can kind of read into that he was going through something. This is what he said. He says in verse 8, he says, For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. And so what we can gather from that, even though uh, this he's saying this in past tense, we can understand that there was a time in this man's life when it just seemed like he couldn't move forward. He, could, he kept crying and the tears kept coming. He kept stumbling. And, and he, I, what I see here really is a man who's struggling with his history. He's struggling with the facts of his life. And, and he's looking at those things and he's saying, God, why out of everybody in my circle, of friends. Why is it that I have to go through this? Why do I have to experience this pain? All I feel like I'm doing is stumbling forward. I keep on crying and it just seems like my mind and my will and my emotions are entangled in death. And so he determined at one point, I believe he said, I'm going to press through this. Let me tell you something, if you're disappointed in life, if it's like you're carrying around a great big sack of disappointments, listen, the best thing you can do, my friend, is go to God in prayer. Amen. Jesus says to you this morning, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. You don't have to carry them any longer. And that's my third point today. The third thing he did was he turned to God in prayer. And this is the testimony, I believe, of a man who prayed through. Psalms 116, he said this. He said, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. <laughs> He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Let me tell you something. I'm, he called on the Lord in the hour of his great need. That, my friend, is the answer. Turning to God. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm grateful for the men God has placed in my life. I'm grateful for my wife that's there to encourage me. I'm grateful for the body of Christ that prays for me. But let me tell you, there's some times in my life when the only one that I need is the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. When I say, God, I just want to get alone with you. And that's what happened to this man in Psalms 116 and verse 4. He said, then I called on the name of the Lord. My grandmother used to be a pianist. And, uh, her, one of her songs that she used to sing in those days was, was what a friend we have in Jesus. And one of the verses of that song goes like this. It says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God 
and prayer. Today I'm telling you, amen, that that's pretty good theology. You don't have to carry that anymore. You don't have to bring that pain along with you. You don't have to live your life without peace. God is saying to you, come and bring it to me. Amen. I wonder, is there anybody here who would say, you know, Pastor, that's been me in the past. There have been moments when I was going through life's disappointments, but I called out on the name of the Lord and he came to me and he touched me come on what I'm saying to you is that when you come you'll discover that there is a gracious loving wonderful heavenly father that's waiting to pick you up and embrace you and see you through you say well what's the next thing I've got to do besides going to the Lord you've got to learn how to pour out your emotions to him pour out your emotions to the Lord Psalms 116 Verses 10 and 11 are very interesting. As you look at it, you, you, you don't really know the situation. You don't understand quite everything that's happened. But this guy, he says this. He said, I am greatly afflicted. And in my dismay, I said, he's talking to God here. I said, all men are liars. <laughs> he just laid it out there. I want you to understand this. God is not shook up when you get emotional. Your husband might get shook up if you get emotional. Hello. Your wife might get shook up. But let me tell you something. God can handle your emotions. You can tell him exactly what you're feeling. You've got to understand that God created us as emotional beings. And it's okay to cry. Amen. It's okay to feel anger. It's okay to feel frustration. It's that emotion that we've got to learn how to handle. I just wonder, has anybody ever prayed through and just poured? their emotion out to God as I was studying this morning I began to rehearse my history with the Lord and I remember in Stanford Texas lying on the floor of a little office in there and I was praying and I was crying out to God praying in my prayer language and I remember the feeling of peace that came upon me and God was with me there I remember driving down interstate uh, 35 going to the north and I was trying to make a big decision in my life would I stay a missionary would I become a pastor what would I do and I was crying out to God the tears were running down my cheeks and I'm telling you Jesus came into that car with me that day he gave me his will and his guidance and I'm just here today to tell you that if you're hurting today if you're broken on the inside come to Jesus come on pour it out before the Lord